not. <laughs> I just want to shake some sense into you, kids. Hopefully around your neck. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It is I, the, it is I, G. Shiro Finney, author, alien, and human. You know, I don't really feel like doing the announcement today. You know, you know who we are. This is a pissed off yeah. Gen Xers. Welcome to the show, blah, blah, blah. Yep, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. How is everyone? Uh, watching the wind. And wind... And you know, hoping I don't hear that famous alarm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. That, that would not be good. A giraffe died a horrible death on the floor. <laughs> a stuffed giraffe died a horrible death. <laughs> guts oh, <no>. everywhere. <laughs> Fluffy white cotton guts everywhere. I have the, to sweep the, that up. Does it have a squeaker in it that now yes. just sounds sad? <laughs> yes, now it just sounds sad. <laughs> Oof. Well, that. yeah, she she got to play with it for almost a month. Hey, that's pretty. Before good. she ripped it up. Well, Since it is the crazy. month of my birth, Happy uh, birthday. I've been receiving gifts from certain people. Cat's uh, mom sent me socks, always useful. <laughs> well, they're and they're uh, they're Japanese uh, samurai socks. To, the toe socks, yes. Yeah, oh, they're tabby socks. Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. But that's your, cool. You can wear them with your flip flops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, actually, I, I find the uh, toe socks comfortable. Uh, so I thought that was cool. And and then some mysterious person sent me an action figure of uh, Mojo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I was actually. Wait, very did surprised. it not say it? Did the happy birthday card like thing not come with it? No. No, that was from me. I've been plotting that with Kat for like two weeks. <laughs> it was just a box full of paper and uh, uh, well, Mojo that's there. Happy like, birthday oh. issue. That was my gift to you. You needed a Mojo action figure, so I got you one. Uh, I, I'm going to be assembling it. I was quite impressed with the uh, detail on it. Yeah, it's the same one that I got when I was a kid. I was surprised they still had them around. Ooh, it's vintage. Because we all because we all know how much both Janelle and I are fans of Mojoverse, so so it's well, not I'm Mojo glad you Jojo. Like it. It's not Mojo Jojo from uh, Powerpuff Girls. No, 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 no. Give me a second. I'll be right back. I'm on the no. back porch. No, it's it's fat, uh, oh, failing from... liver, couch potato Mojo from X Men. Ah. That would be a difficult figure to put together. I'm on the back porch. I'd let the cat out. She comes in and then she bitches because she's inside. She goes outside and she bitches because she's outside. Cats are perpetually on the wrong side of whatever door is there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so when you I have leave watched it open, her... then they get mad at you. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I was reading that cats have a problem, a little bit of problem with object permanence. Mm -hmm. So when you open the door and it's not the way they want it, they get mad because they think you opened the door to the wrong spot. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just, it's like a toddler. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's their toddler. <laughs> I am on the back porch. I'll look at it when I come back in. Oh, man. It's fucking been an interest. You know, yesterday's yeah. game went pretty well, even with as tired as everybody was. It that was fun. Well. Went very well, yeah. Hey, you guys, you guys finally uh, ran into something that you know you weren't on the edge of getting killed every fight. No. Nope. And you saw the problems with kobolds. There was never just one. And that when was fight, insane. When you fight one, all their friends show up. Okay. Well, the call drop stopped me from using overrun and charge. <laughs> So, hey, that was a really good call. Because they can actually swarm you under. And then we barbecued them. Mm -hmm. So And then you barbecued the rats. Yes. <laughs> Mojo. I will, like I said, I'll look at it when I come in. Okay. Chat's probably thrilled. 
Oh, man. Well, Mojo is this uh, bizarre uh, cyborg demonic overlord of his own uh, universe that is based entirely around TV. Isn't it a pocket universe? It's not that big. Yeah. It's only like a handful of worlds. And uh, it looks very Blade Runner-ish because it was the 80s. And it definitely was very influenced by the Max Headroom series. And the whole thing is based around really fucked up television shows to entertain people. And he's obsessed with the X-Men. Down to he put uh, cameras. He, he replaced Psylocke's eyes with cameras so he could record their adventures and uh, use them for entertainment. You know what pissed me off about that? What? What? Uh, back when Shadowrun first came out, when it was first edition, I don't know if Mojo had shown up at this point, but uh, we were playing Shadowrunners, and the whole crew got fucked up and ended up at a ripper dock. And, you know, some uh, some al some uh, alphaware came through, alphaware eyes, and every you know everybody who needed them got them. I mean, even the mage got so injured he took. He took essence loss, so he had room for cyber eyes. Well, we couldn't figure out what the, you know, like three months later, well, three or four months later of playing, the DM tells us, we, you know, the GM tells us we start to see a TV show called Silly Shadow Runners, and it's fucking us. <laughs> you know, it's from multiple <laughs> viewpoints. And we find out that this cocksucker worked for a major corporation, and he made sure we got Alphaware cyber eyes because he was recording us. Through That's our very own cyberpunk. Eyes and putting it on TV. We were our, our characters. Every time we went and got our faces changed, all of a sudden it was new actors introducing introducing this random asshole as Carbide. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, we we made it our mission to hunt that asshole down, shoot him in the face right in his fucking office. Dickhead. And then you know, I then that shit came out. And I remember I was so mad when I saw that, I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, it's not Son an original idea. It's not an original idea, but it still felt like, you know, great. Now, you know, if I tell the story, everybody's going to think I'm ripping off a fucking comic book. Man, fuck you, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, while that plot never happened in a Gibson story, uh, William Gibson did have it in quite a few of his stories that uh, that was the hottest thing on uh, television was... Uh, having actors who've had their eyes replaced with cameras and you yes. just basically live their lives. You know, that's going to happen. Yeah. That's going to fucking happen. I mean, people already do it. We're in headsets constantly. God, remember that thing for a while in the early to mid 2000, no mid to mid to mid 2000s to mid 2010 where people like put webcams in their entire house. And like in their cart, and they filmed their every, you know, they they had live streams of their everyday fucking lives. Do you remember I that never shit? understood the appeal to that, but I guess yeah, somebody. Some people still do there. it. They do sleep streams. You go and you pay to watch these people sleep. I did a sleep Why? stream by accident. I have got drunk and fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> For like five hours. Like, oh shit, I'm streaming. Yeah, I woke up, I was like, fuck, I'm streaming. It's dark outside, cats on my lap. I'm like, fuck. Holy shit, why do I have 85 viewers? Shit. As soon as I guy, woke, he's drunk. And as soon as I woke up, they all left. Oh like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's weird. Creepy. It's that like they were just watching me sleep. Yeah, that's some voyeur shit. That's like I was uh, you know, my my daughter's for my daughter's first child got really cranky and my and uh, nobody could get her to settle down, and so you know we put the we put the baby lotion on her, and I laid her on my bare chest, and I was I was streaming at the time, and I forgot I was using my Mac, and a Mac has a built-in camera, so I forgot that everybody could see me, and I'm laying there with just the baby, you know, just talking, and it was back before YouTube fucking clamped on and everything, so you could hear the fucking Teletubbies in the background, and I look over. And there's like 300 people in the fucking channel watching this sleeping baby and me laying on the couch. And they're going, they're going, this is so calming. This is so nice. And I was like, what the fuck? And I looked over, I went, what the fuck? What, what the hell are people watching me for? I was like, oh, fuck, the camera's on. And everybody bailed out of the stream except for like four people. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with people? 
Why are you watching me lay on the couch? I'm ugly. The baby's cute, but I'm <laughs> ugly. <laughs> but you can only see like my chest and the you can see mostly the baby and like my face. But I was like, why are people watching me? This is so weird. Oh, that is kind of cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, I recognize him now. Yeah, that's ah, that's the that's the guy who gave us scatter shot. Oh yeah, you're right. As well as long shot. Yep. Uh, it, there's a button on the back, or there should be a button on the back that you can click that makes the scorpion tail. Yeah. Nice. Attack. And kind of a cool fun fact. Uh, really kind of tying together the whole Max Headroom vibe of the Mojo verse. When they did the X-Men cartoon, they got actor Matt Fewer, who is Max Headroom, to do his voice. Oh, nice. Which is just and perfect. he was great at it. It is the role so. he was born to play. Yes. So at least yours has all its legs. Uh, when Chris was younger, he really liked the Mojo action figures. So on mine, a couple of the legs are missing. <laughs> I think they went up the vacuum cleaner <laughs> or someplace. I don't know. But yeah, mine's missing uh, two of the legs, two or three of the legs. It means it's well loved. Yes. Well, I uh, I have the one of the old school Storm action figures too, and it used to have a cape as well. Uh, when I was babysitting kids in high school, I would bring the action figures over. You know, my Gambit, my Rogue, my Storm, Cyclops. I had almost all of them. And I left the room, and I came back, and one of the kids I was babysitting had ripped her cape out. Aww. And then was oh. working on Gambit's jacket. I snatched those figures up so quick. <laughs> It's like, nope, nope, nope. Okay, playtime's over. We're yep. Done. Oh, God, what's happening in 40K? Yeah. I, well, I've already had a heart attack this weekend from Gambit being killed off on the X-Men cartoon. That well, was quick. fucking brutal, dude. I was depressed yesterday. <laughs> Steve made me go outside and garden so I'd be happy. So what the fuck is happening in 40K? What drama now? Uh, they have decided that female space marines have always existed. Fuck me. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they have. They're called the Sisters of Battle. Jesus fucking Christ. People. Oh, my. This is why we can't have nice things. You I know what? Female space marines that. have not existed. The reason being is the genome is based off. Oh, I don't know. The emperor of mankind who's a fucking male. There's, well, a, there's a more logical reason, actually. You don't even have to get into that. And I mean, that's lore. But there's a more logical reason why you would not have female space marines. You were living in a hostile universe where mankind's numbers are not guaranteed, that's constantly at threat, and the species is close to being wiped out. In those situations, women don't fight. They produce no. babies. Mm -hmm. And the cultures oh, that don't die out. Female custodies? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> the custodies are the genetically engineered, quote unquote, companions, aka bodyguards of the emperor. If you thought Primarchs were badass, like peak human, no, it's custodies. And they've always been male until now. And I think I might actually be dropping 40k. Why? Yeah, a lot Stop of people are touching aren't. my shit. Stop touching my shit. I apologize for the screechy voice, but I mean, I've just, I've had it, man. No, <laughs> I've just no, fucking no. had it. Uh, everything's trash. You know, they, they keep wondering why everyone hates millennials. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why you guys were so stuck on this. And I don't mean our audience, because our audience are the outliers. I, they, I, I checked out with three words. Wheelchair, accessible, dungeons. Yeah. And it's a strange kind of rebellion to say, well, you know, we're going to take the previous generation's culture and just shit all over it, and then sanitize it and make it woke. No, no, it's and then not tell, sanitized. And then tell us it's, it's ours stupid. now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oh, and and it's for modern audiences. Yes, you modern know what? audiences need handicapped accessible. Yeah, yeah. 
that that kind of sums it all up right there, doesn't it? Hey, Neostar, um, with Ishii's permission, I was going to rant about what how the whole fucking X-Men 97 thing went because the guy that made X-Men 97, the showrunner that eventually got fired, um, his whole premise and how he got the job to make X-Men 97 was his plan to kill off Gambit from the jump. So I'm going to rant on Wednesday, if you don't mind. Sure. Well, uh, I can rant about it for a little bit. Um, he but checks off. Why he hated Gambit. Everybody hates Gambit at Marvel, except for Jim Lee. And I do not understand why, because he is one of the most popular characters and is a ginormous fan favorite, and they all fucking yeah. hate him. He ticks off all the wrong boxes. White, Southerner, French Catholic. And, and they also, him. oh, go ahead, Ralts. No, 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 go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, uh, no, just the, the whole show was literally, he made a soap opera. They had Rogue having an affair with Magneto the whole time when Magneto she takes knew. over the X-Men. And she, you find out that her and Gambit were never official because, quote, you can't touch me, so I can't feel you. But she strung him along. He follows her to Genosha. Um, she dumps him in Genosha because she told him even though he loves her, she'd rather be able to have sex. Does a horny dance with Magneto in front of everybody in Genosha, including Gambit, and then kisses him. Then dumps Magneto saying, no, never mind, I actually do love Gambit, and then both get killed. I'm not joking. That was the first five fucking episodes. Also, they had Gene macking down on Wolverine before telling him, I will never get together with you, and I'm going back to Scott. This is after Madeline Pryor got exiled to Genosha. Not only that, in Genosha, when they brought in this Super Sentinel, they killed Magneto Gambit, Callisto and all the Morlocks, Sebastian Shaw, Madeline Pryor, Banshee, Moira McTaggart. You know, all the characters people actually give a shit about, which Kat told me yesterday. It's like, that's Again, all the characters. Yeah. They walked in and took a great big steamy shit on the previous generation's culture. Not only that, Gambit got killed so Sunspot could take his place on the team. Because Sunspot's powers got changed to absorbing solar energy and becoming super strong to absorbing solar energy and redirecting it. You know who else has that same power that's already on the team? Oh, Cyclops. Bishop. Oh, yeah, and Cyclops absorb solar energy and turn it into Force Blast. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to rant about this on Wednesday. Tonight's uh, no, Monday no, night. No, go ahead. I mean, you know, you know, look, I read – you want to know when I stopped reading X-Men? I stopped reading X-Men in the mid-'90s. I picked it up, and the art had suddenly changed. Yeah. All of yeah. a sudden, all of the X-Men were the skinny, metrosexual uh, – Ronnie gender, you know, gender fluid metrosexuals. Magneto, now it was after the big thing where Magneto, uh, where Magneto had the space station and Xavier fucking wiped his brain. And then after a while, he came back. Uh, Magneto came back and joined the X Men and he was young again. Remember that? Yep. Oh, that was oh, his oh. clone, Joseph. Well, nobody knew that at the time. Oh, okay. So this no, this is the first episode. It shows them out there playing basketball, and they're all wearing skin tight trunks with their bulges, and they're all slamming against each other, and they all look metrosexual and unisex. And nobody has it. You know, it showed Rogue, and she's wearing like a one piece, and nobody has any breasts, and there's like long hair down to their asses everywhere. I don't. I got like eight pages into it, and I'm like. You know what? I accidentally walked into a gay bar on a Saturday night at like one in the morning, and it wasn't even as gay as this. And I chucked, I chucked the magazine away. And I went down and said, "Hey, cancel my polls, all of my X Men polls," uh, because he was like, "Well, the new cable came in," and I was like, "I took one look at that. And I was like, that's not cable." You know, I was like, "That's not cable. I don't know who the fuck that is. That's not cable." Because after cable got shredded and was in a coma and then came back and then disappeared, I was like, "Can you turn my light? That's not cable." And he's like, well, what about, you know, what about your DC? Yo, I went from having about a $300 a month poll on Marvel Comics to nothing. Because, and they, let's see, at the same time, they canceled Lobo. Um, Superman had that dumbass fucking haircut in the black suit. <laughs> all that shit. 
I was just like, you know what? You know what? I'm out. I'm out. They're like, oh, it's fine. Fine. Everything got an update. It's like, I hate you also. I hate my fellow Gen Xers so much because they have to have everything fucking X Max to the extreme bullshit. You know what? How about you fucking shoot a Mountain Dew and shut the fuck up? <laughs> was that when they were trying to compete with the uh, image? Yes. And yeah, that was pretty uh, sad. The most try hard shit I'd seen in my life. Oh my God, was image. I mean, image is like, oh, look, we're so gritty. We can kill kids and show their organs flying everywhere. Yeah, I don't want to see that. Okay, I've seen kids get killed. I don't want to see kids get killed. You know, oh, we can show you a pregnant woman getting shot in the face. Well, I don't want to see that either, you know. And it's like, fuck, why is everybody trying to be edgy? Well, it's not your daddy's. I don't give a fuck about my dad, okay? It was mine. Well, you'll just have to deal with the new. I said, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to buy any of this stuff. You know, the comic book guy's like, well, you know, you really need to support. I'm like, fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I bought it through all the dumbass fucking. It was like 96, 97 this happened. I was like, I bought, I supported them through all the dumbass fucking covers, all the fucking metallicized covers, all the fucking holographic covers. I supported them when they released like eight or nine of the same fucking issue, just with different colors. So I'd stumble in half drunk and buy four of the same fucking issues. I looked and said, and you wouldn't tell me. Well, they were collectors of this. Nobody's collecting anything. They printed five million of them. Nobody. Nobody's gonna do it. You can put your but you know, no, I'm an unreasonable one. Yeah. Well, hey, we can all thank Image for bursting the bubble with the comic book industry in the '90s because they put out all those fucking different holographic imprint number ones for the collectors. Yeah. And then also the writers and artists not keeping a schedule, and their books would come out six, seven months late because they own their stuff, so they didn't give a shit. Yeah. You know, it was just, uh, you know, I didn't mind Todd McFarlane's, Todd McFarlane stuff. Everybody's like, oh, but Todd McFarlane is the comic industry's down. No, he wasn't. Okay. It, number one, at least he produced on time. And number mm -hmm. two, you know, his artwork was, sure, he couldn't draw feet. Okay. Sure, his, his opponents were feet. But, <laughs> you know, uh, it was it was better than what came after him. Okay. Look, look what would you rather have? Would you rather have fucking... Not, no, it's not McFarlane. What was the fuck was his name? It's Liefeld that couldn't draw feet. Liefeld. It was Liefeld. Okay. Would you rather have Liefeld's artwork back, you know, pointed pointed ballet shoes and all, or would you rather have what we have now? Oh, I would take Liefeld's on point feet in a heartbeat. I would not give a fuck that they all have ballet shoes for feet. I would take the adventures of Man Boop Captain America any day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, that was and, and, funny because he fucked up in the middle of making it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and no, but you were right. They came out on time. Um, and also McFarlane came out on yeah. time, you know, so. No, uh, Jim Lee was the one that was late a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then they went metrosexual and then they changed all the costumes. I didn't even care about changing all the costumes. Like, I can live with that. But I mean, it just got... Oh my god, I got annoying. But yeah, I dropped comics because I was like, wow, Magneto is a 20-something metrosexual twink. And that's more abs than you see at a gay gym. And why are they rubbing up against each other? Yeah, you know, I checked out by that time. I had I thoroughly out right there. that stuff. And, you know, I... and then my wife got tired of the gambit, the gambit uh rogue fucking thing. They're like, they're never, you know, they're never, you know, there's issues where Gambit touches her bare skin with his bare hand and she hasn't noticed yet. So either A, they're never going to do this and it's going to be a fucking X-Files thing or, you know, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> well, all of us Gambit Rogue fans got lucky because they essentially got married. They're the only X-Men couple that has stayed together. And Marvel is scratching their heads wanting to know why they are the most popular couple instead of Scott and Emma. Nobody Gee, I wonder Scott. why. Because <laughs> Scott would stick his dick in a warm, warm loaf of bread if you taped a picture of Green Jay to it. Yeah. He would fuck any telepath. He, he's got a fetish for telepaths. Who was it again that made uh, Emma his girlfriend? Because Grant Morrison. Oh, it was Morrison? 
Yeah. Morrison uh, he, said that his uh, wife, his Jean Grey reminded him of his wife that he was divorcing, and Emma Frost was just like his mistress that he was with. So that's why he destroyed, he projected, this is something I wanted to, we can talk about it tonight, about how the writers, there's this group of writers that, well, they've been, it's like Grant Morrison, Matt Fraction, Chuck Austin, those guys have projected themselves on to the comic book characters, completely writing them out of character because they're writing them as themselves. That's why Emma and Scott got together was because Grant, and there are articles out there where he admits it. If you guys want to look it up, if you think I'm full of shit, look it up. He even talks about it. And that's why he made Jean Grey all of a sudden this cold bitch and Scott having an affair with Emma. And we all know that's all out of character. Now, Scott can have trauma because, yes, he was possessed by Apocalypse for a while. That would fuck anybody up if you've read X-Men. Being a possessed by Apocalypse with that pure evil in your brain, yeah, it's going to mess you up. But not to the point that you don't want to talk to your wife who's an Omega-level mutant who has a degree in psychology and is a trained psychiatrist. No, you want to talk to the supervillain that has tried on many times to kill you and your team, uh, has mind-raped Storm and Iceman, and you you want to talk to her because she's a hoe, and she'll fuck you in your mind. No, no I problem. Think it's fitting because, uh, you know, Scott Summers seems to also like fucking crazy, you know? Yes, yeah. yes he does. So, uh, speaking of uh, Grant Morrison... Because I'm uh, shifting back to uh, finishing up Boobs of Steel 2 now. That's the project I'm currently on. Um, Janelle, I will have two more chapters of How Am I a Villain? And then, unfortunately, my editor told me I had to finish Boobs of Steel. So it'll have okay, to go Okay, I understand. I understand. But I'll have two uh, chapters for you to read, and then it'll have to wait for a bit. Uh, but since I'm back on Boobs of Steel 2, I realized I had to break down and read Grant Morrison's Super Gods. It is the <laughs> most pretentious, self-congratulatory, anti-American, dick-stroking, commie crap, New Age bullshit I have ever fucking read. By the way, he got it in his hands. I mean, it arrived today. He didn't crack it open until about an hour and a half before the show. So... <laughs> oh. No, is, is Super Gods a, a graphic novel or a no, sort no, of autobiography? It's, him, it's it's his uh, experiences in the comic industry, but also explaining the theory of comic book heroes as myths. Oh as my fucking myths. God. This guy like, who doesn't understand how American comics works writes like he's a fucking expert on it? Uh, Are you yes. kidding me? And the he's the really one that made a transvestite me. street in the Doom Patrol series. Yes. And the weird thing is, is he kept going on and on and on about, you know, myth, you know, this being American myths, well, by simultaneously constantly ripping on Americans and specifically uh, Rust Belt people are a Midwest, you know, flyover country. There's something about, he made some, he was saying something about, you know, a place where, you know, a lot of disagreements form between your sister wife. Oh, that's I'm, what you think your audience, yeah, huh? I'm so fucking sick of that. I am so fucking sick of that. I am absolutely fucking tired of it. Okay, I mean, I'm sick of hearing that because that is like their constant fucking go to. And it's like, look, you know, the fact is, it's pretty funny. Outside of weird, isolated fucking communities, it's pretty fucking rare. You okay. Know, not only that, we're talking about the same group of people where it's ma'am. Yeah. So, yeah. Look, those, those pedos fucking have no room to talk at this point. Well, it's been 60 years of defamation through the fucking media. Yeah. I mean, as far as people know, you know, where I live, you know, nobody nobody has a truck before 19 fucking 70. Nobody has any fucking teeth. Nobody has a fucking high school education. Nobody can fucking read. And, and we're all just standing around. <laughs> Everybody, and we're all fucking goats are our sisters. I was going to say, everybody thinks that Deliverance was an autobiography on the Midwest and the South. Yeah. Oh, uh, spaced stoned sister wife means that your wife is also your sister or that you are a hardcore polygamist Mormon. Yeah. But uh, the other thing is, 
I came to the conclusion I was reading this guy going on and on about how he had reinvented American comics and brought heroism back and it's all this crap, right? What the fuck? Please sorry, tell me you're going to burn that? that fucking book after you're done reading it. I'm sorry, run that by me again. I missed something. Oh, he, he was going what? on about how he and his fellow Brits had reinvented American comics and did all this great stuff and brought heroism back and wonder and... Okay, wait, wait. Before Waltz goes on his rant, I just want to say American no, comics no. were doing just fine before the Brits came in and ruined it. Okay? You know, I've got an idea. You know, let's first let Americans write American comics, and second, let's have people who actually like superheroes write them. Brits because don't we've seen understand. what the rest of them can do. What? Brits don't understand why people like Judge Red. No, uh, no that's they true. Don't. No, they don't. They don't. They don't understand why people think that a fascist police officer is fucking awesome. Well, you know what? They're they're finding out now. You know, yeah. you know, you know. They like to say, "Oh, be American, go to school, get shot." Yeah, be British, go outside, get stabbed. I mean, every, you know that they, they're stop. They're going to stop reporting on stab wounds because it might, it might make people racist. Yeah. God, and I thought uh, me seeing the uh, footage from the uh, the mall stabbing in Australia yeah. and their own reaction to it. Do you see that shit's been happening amazing. on their fucking, you know, been seeing what's been happening on the tube, on the British tube, on their what? fucking subway? They're fucking whipping, these fucking guys are whipping out knives that are like six inches fucking long and look like they belong to Mola Ram and just stabbing the fuck out of people. Yeah, yeah. That's why uh, they're they, holding them down and everybody just sits there. There is more knife deaths in uh london then there are gun deaths in new york no then there are gun deaths in america oh has it yeah. gotten to that point if you but guns, if you hey people guns suicide, are bad guns are bad out, if you take out suicide and accidental there are more fucking stabbings lethal stabbings than there are fucking gun deaths well let's be fucking racist and just st say the truth if you took out Baltimore, New York, Chicago, and uh, Detroit in LA. the gun stat, LA, LA. or in LA, uh, our gun numbers would be lower than most New <laughs> European nations. Actually, it has nothing to do with race. It has to do with a fucking city who fucking won't fucking police, who won't fucking do their job, who won't fucking you know stop this shit. And you know, let's not forget the big thing when they when they the FBI a few years back, the FBI traced a bunch of serial numbers on the guns used in fucking in fucking shootings and. The robberies and shit. You know what they found out? Eric Holder. <laughs> they found out that they'd been uh they found out that those guns had been turned in and put in police lockup two or three times each. Oh no, no, no. I got one to top that. Did you hear about DC? Where they <laughs> fucked up I can't now. Wait. Well, DC the Metro Police was the only FFL for the DC area. So if you wanted a gun, it had to go through the DC police and they would be the ones to do your background check. It was something like 70% of the guns that went through there in five years came back in, in having been used in a crime. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, what gets me is what I thought. Just south of I-5 was blocked in two places today. And uh, one of them was by Eugene. And this really got me. It shows it's a single line of protesters linking hands across fucking I-5. Okay, number one, they should have been ran over. But right behind them are cop vehicles and a line of cops just standing there. It's gotten to the point in the U.S. where the police in major metropolitan areas protect lawbreakers more than they do people. Hmm. Why didn't they drag, you know, it's Oregon. Why didn't they drag those fuckers off the fucking highway and beat them with batons? Lord knows Oregon. they'll pull me out of my fucking truck and fucking put a baton against the back of my fucking neck while they search my pockets when I'm driving around at two in the morning. Uh, the same thing happened on the uh, Golden Gate Bridge today, actually. The uh, protesters blocked it, but they blocked it on the side where you're leaving the bridge. So you had people stuck on the entirety of the okay. bridge. And and Ishii can tell you more specifics on The thing where is, that is, the Bay Bridge, it was the Bay Bridge, right? Not the Golden no, Gate? No, the Golden Gate. Oh, it was the Golden Gate? It was the okay, Golden Gate. Okay, that's funny. That's funny. And here's why. 
the the Bay Bridge gets blocked by protesters almost on a monthly basis in San Francisco. It was going on when I was there. And the idea, it, and the, the, the thing is, the police in San Francisco, the government's like, oh, well, the Bay Bridge goes to the working class communities. Who gives a fuck if it's blocked? They don't do anything. It's the it's the Golden Gate that they'll get mad if it's blocked. So that's good. That's great yeah. to hear that it was a Golden Gate that got blocked. Yeah, it was the side that was exiting the bridge into, what is that, uh, Oakland? <laughs> That side, um, the side exiting into, that's where they blocked it. And then the cops are like, you know, you know we should really do something. So they blocked the other side. <laughs> There's another fun story about that, about the Golden Gate. And it'll probably, uh, anyone who's in that area will never, ever want to drive on it again after I tell this. Um, I forget if it was the uh, centennial in the 70s or what, but there was this huge celebration uh, and it was an anniversary of something. Maybe it was the construction of the, of the Golden Gate, but it was the thing where they closed down all traffic and let people go onto the Golden Gate Bridge. And it was so crowded. It was like a festival there. And the entire bridge was just packed with people, all right? And in the distance, you, there was apparently still news footage of it. The arch, the Boeing arch was beginning to bend downward. <laughs> The they never did anything about it? this. They've never. Oh man, it's still the same fucking bridge. I went over the Golden Gate Bridge once with my parents when I was a kid, and I was terrified the whole time because I watched way too many movies where that fucking bridge collapsed. So I'm not surprised to find out that's probably a real thing. It, it, it's not nearly as stable as uh, they would like you to think. Jesus. <laughs> Well, it's a fucking Yay. the bridge is old as fuck, and they haven't upgraded it or fucking done maintenance on it for shit in years. Nope. Oh, I'm waiting for the Golden Gate Bridge or the Oakland Bridge to collapse, and we have something that Baltimore. We have something in common with Baltimore now. Uh, the the, the uh, Bay Bridge is probably fine. They rebuilt the Oakland half. Oh, of that's it on right after ground. the earthquake. Yeah, because uh, the Oakland side was actually on sinking ground. And the uh, cantilever side, the other side of the bridge, is very, very well intact. It's doing fine. Did you guys see the fucking part where protesters blocked off right in front of the airport so that people trying to get to the airport for their flights had to abandon their fucking cars on the road? That was wow. I heard about that. I heard about that. Yeah. That was hilarious. Jeez. People are getting really sick of this shit. Mm-hmm. Well, I will say that um, people are finally understanding that they got what they paid for in California. So you've heard about the, the $20 minimum wage, right? Yeah. yeah. Everything is shutting down in California and leaving uh, Chinese restaurants that have been there for decades. We're talking 40, 50 years are now shutting down. The 99 cent store, which started in California, is now they're shutting down all of their stores because they can no longer afford to pay their workers. Um, the, a bunch of McDonald's too. are shutting down. So we're about to have a supply and food drought in California. And now, now everybody's saying, oh, maybe Gavin Newsom was wrong. And I'm <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? How many years have we been saying this guy is going to fuck this state? And now that people are losing their livelihood, this $20 minimum wage was supposed to make things great for everyone. We have more unemployment now in California because people are getting laid off left and right or just their their businesses are shutting down. So there's tons of people out of work now. Yep. Yeah. So you get what you pay for. That That's why you do not vote Patrick Bateman into office. The thing is, is what gets me is it's not... It was the problem with minimum wage isn't that they weren't getting enough to buy groceries and stuff like that. The problem was plain and simple rent takes up the majority of rent and utilities take up the majority of your paycheck. Yes. See, yes. I was, okay. Let's go back to let's go. Let's get in the way back machine and go back to the early 80s when I moved out on my own. $150 a month, you know, five acres and a leaking single wide mobile home. My utilities counting cable came up to less than $150. Now, I earned 10 an hour, which was really good money back then. 
Yeah, actually, and that is. I yeah, feel, that's really I, good. Yeah, it, well, I worked in a slaughterhouse. What do you expect? Oh, and I got it. I got an extra. Yeah. I got an extra hundred dollars on Saturday if I if I jumped into the fucking awful pit. It came up to about my chest and shoveled oh. it out. Oh. Hey, that was a hundred dollars for three hours of work. Fuck that. Yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, oh, it's worth times, it. It's just you. <laughs> one of the times I did it, it was it was a light misty rain and it was like 90 degrees outside and I did it and my boss took my girlfriend down and bought us a new refrigerator. Oh, wow. Now, the, Damn. Here's the thing though. The tax, the IRS didn't take all my fucking money. The state tax didn't take all my fucking money. My utilities and my rent didn't eat up my fucking paycheck. That's what's killing everybody. You have okay. Remember when they made us get car insurance? That extra thirty bucks—that's three hours of work. And if you were earning minimum wage, which was like six twenty-five, that was five hours of fucking work. That's five hours of your life they're taking. You know, insurance and now health insurance and utilities and internet and this fee and that fee and the other fee. They the the state has taken about half of your paycheck. Before yeah. you ever get it, the state takes half half of your fucking paycheck. Then, you know, you the, and it's you know it's not the landlord's fault because they have to have outrageous fucking insurance on shit, and you know, people don't treat the houses worth a fuck if they're renting. I mean, people act like the fucking houses, you know, they can rip the copper wire out, but you know, but rent, but rents are obscene. But half of that is property tax. One of the big reasons I left Oregon. Was my property tax? My property tax went up, and it wasn't because we voted on anything. It's because they came through and decided how much everything because they wanted more property tax. They reevaluated everybody's properties, and all of a sudden, I was paying ten thousand dollars a year in property tax. It was ridiculous. So you know, it's uh, pro, uh, housing. Even if you're a landlord, housing. I mean. You don't make much money being a landlord, you know, unless you own like hundreds of them. You know, if you're if you're some dude renting out a fucking spare house, you're not making any money. You're not you're not retiring, smoking cigars. You know, you're just fucking sucking. But, uh, you know, it's housing, utilities. Food wasn't bad until the last three years. That's when food got bad. Gasoline. You no, know, that's a little bit, but not too bad. It's mainly. Your utilities and your rent and all the fucking insurance crap. If you get I, rid of that, that that eats up a half to three quarters of the rest of your money. Now you get to buy food. Well, Ralt, I was just going to say, in California, gas is almost six bucks now. So, no, it's starting to eat up. Gasoline is starting to eat up stuff, too. I have to fill my gas tank at least twice a week now. Oh God. I also have to drive far to take care of stuff. But yeah, uh, at least once to twice a week, I am refilling my gas tank. Nick, fuck, it's only uh, 285 here. No, it's like 589 here. It just got up to uh, 420 here, actually. Uh, 420. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's no, ridiculous no. here in California. I, they are chomping at the bit to demolish Prop 13. Everybody will be fucked if that goes. Because it's California. They are going to take us and rake us over the coals if Prop 13 is undone. What is Prop 13? It regulates property tax so you can't hike it. They've right. Gavin Newsom's been trying to get rid of it for years. They've been... the the um. Sacramento has been trying to get rid of it for years because they know. And I'm going to say right now, I honestly think like California isn't the testing ground. California is showing what Build Back Better is going to become. People are going to lose everything and leave. And the people who are left aren't going to own anything and they're going to have to like it. Well, I've got one for you with that. Um, and yeah, my grandparents uh, moved into Inglewood in 1952, and they had that house until they both died, when my grandfather died in 2021. Um, 
my mom just who is their uh, uh executor just got a notice from the state saying oh yeah um we raised your property taxes like right before uh you know your father died you owe us eleven thousand dollars are you fucking kidding me no actually i'm not surprised why am i not surprised and the re only reason why is because um that house it's a mile and a half away from the new football stadium uh, there it is. The reason that Prop 13 was passed at all, and I think it was either the early 80s or it was the 70s um, when it happened, was that um, old people who had been in their home all their life were getting you know, suddenly booted out of their homes with uh, tax hikes, mm -hmm. uh, pr property, property tax hikes. So you had all these retirees on fixed income suddenly without homes. Yeah, it, they were already starting it back in the 80s. And so Prop 13 was passed to prevent that. And I think that was, uh, oh, was it Dick Majin who did that? I forget who uh, pushed that through to prevent uh, property taxes from doing that. You know what kills me about the people who live in my state is they actually think the people in Sacramento have their backs. And then they get confused and upset why, like, the, you know, San Diego is the least affordable city in the United States right now. How the fuck did that happen? California is the least affordable state to live in. How did that happen? And I mean, everybody's seen the pattern, so we don't need to rehash that. But it blows my mind that people still think that the, the people in Sacramento have their backs. I'm like... They are pissing on your heads and calling it rain, and you're not getting it. Like I said, they're just now waking up because their dream of the $20 minimum wage backfired, and now a bunch of people don't have jobs, and so now they can't afford to, a, a part of the, a lot of people who are, the people who are poor are coming out and saying this. They, they interviewed one guy who said that the 99 cent store was his saving grace to be able to get supplies for his kids for school, quick snacks, uh, you know, things like batteries, uh, toiletries, and now, mm -hmm. you know, it's gone. The uh, 99 cent store actually shut down here too. They're, they're all gone. Overnight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there were people like, in the area that I live in, we've got a large elderly population, and a lot of them are like, this was the only place that I could afford to buy groceries at with, uh, you know, uh, with my pension, with my retirement, with my, you know, you know, with what they had. Yeah, no, they're, they're fucking the poor and they're fucking the elderly. And it just... I, I don't even want to say it's mind blowing. I've just come to the conclusion that like nine tenths of the state is mentally retarded <laughs> in California because I cannot believe I see the way people vote constantly. Well, and then I'm like, that's mom. And then I'm like, why are you bitching? You voted for this. Like I can bitch because I didn't vote for it. I voted, but I voted against it. But you wanted this. You didn't nah. do your research like people told you to, and now you're pissed. Well, fuck you. You get what you fucking deserve. Anyone who says, you know, I'm going to come and make Arizona blue, it's like, fuck you. You live in the state that's blue as blue can be. You already got what you want. Stay there. Well, no, they well, won't be happy until the entire state and the entire country is as miserable as California. Well, remember, that's it, doesn't what matter it, what, it doesn't matter what you vote. Remember oh, that. Dear God. Because it, no matter what you vote, if they don't like it, they'll go to the Supreme Court and get it changed. No, they won't even do that. Remember, my state's like ground zero for uh, um, it coming out that uh, elections were rigged. Yeah, like, that's they won't even do that. <laughs> tell, tell them about the uh, death threats. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, this is actually pretty funny. The uh, Arizona, what is it, the Secretary of State? And the election board are scared shitless. They're, they're like, yeah. they're legit frightened of this right now. Good. They've been getting uh, death threats. Now, yes, they've been getting death threats from Arizonans and, you know, that's, you know, 
that is frowned upon. But what yeah. they're really scared of is the number that they've been getting from people in other states. Nationwide, saying, they're yeah, getting nationwide death threats. saying it's because of you that we're in the situation that we are right now. You know what? I'm going to say it. I don't condone death threats. I really don't. I don't condone them. I don't believe you should make death threats. But uh, I think it's good that politicians are afraid. Yeah, they should be. Bureaucrats yeah. and politicians need to go back to being afraid of us. Yeah. Because the smarmy, the smarmy fat woman at the DMV has taken over all of politics and all the bureaucracies. They don't have to listen to us. They don't have to pay attention to us because, you know, we're just the we're just the proles. We're the great unwashed. And if we mattered, we'd have money and could send our butler down to the DMV. We're all a bunch of morons who've married our sister mothers. Yes. Yeah. Because they said so. Yep, I'm just, you know, and I, uh, fine, if that's how it's going to be. Because, you know, Washington State did a long time ago in the 90s. Washington State passed, the, the, the government fought against the tooth and nail. They even took it to the Supreme Court and lost. But uh, they made it so that you couldn't charge hundreds of dollars to register a car. You know, yeah, you had to pay the initial tax, but they couldn't keep charging you hundreds of dollars. Now, before this went into effect, for a 1963 Ford F-150 in 1994, they were trying to charge me $350 to register it. This passed, and it was 35 bucks, even if it was a new car. Of course, you can bet your ass that that's not in place anymore because you have money and they want it. Yeah. Shit. You know, I, I will say that that was one of those jaw dropping, you know, am I dreaming moments when I uh, when we moved out here and I had to register the car. Um, I'm used to paying, you know, 90 bucks a year plus the 50 for uh, uh, smog checks. Um, in fact, I think they made me pay 70 the last time because my car was over a certain amount, you know, California, you, you know, you get it. So when we came out here, they're like, okay, well, you have to get, uh, you know, you have to get your, your car, uh, um, you know, checked their version of smog check. And I'm like, oh fuck, I just had it done too. Okay, fine. I'll take it over there. I get it checked. I'm expecting to be there two hours. I'm there for 15 minutes. They even let me sit in the car. And he's like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, that'll be uh, 10 bucks. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, that'll just be 10 bucks to, uh, you know, for the check. I'm like, okay. And I go back down to the, the um, DMV and register the car. And they're like, okay, yeah, that'll be $30. When I was in Oregon, I used to go to this, uh, they, for the smog, for the smog check, for the it, what pisses me off about California. This is what pisses me off about California is they force their shit on the rest of the U.S. Yep. Or Oregon, you have to pass a California emissions test because you might drive to California. But I used to go to a crooked wrecking yard, and the guy would just you know six pack of beer, ten bucks, whatever, pack of cigarettes, <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, and you know, you know, he'd be like, here you go, fuck the man, brother. <laughs> And, you know, because let's face it, the majority of your paycheck isn't going for food. It isn't going for new clothes. It isn't going for furniture. It's going to the government. Mm -hmm. And it pisses me off. It really does. Because, you know, there was a meme I saw recently. It was a meme that will get you suspended on Facebook. And so the Iron Dome firing it at a... Uh, at our at rockets it's intercepting and it says my tax dollars and then underneath where all the rockets are go are heading toward the iron dome ones it says somehow also my tax dollars yeah. that's where we are they spend our money they spend the tax dollars like it's endless mm -hmm. hey who was it that said this is how you write the uh how you write the letter to the uh, election official without the FBI showing up? Uh, I don't know. No, cat. Um, at this very moment in time, I don't remember. Wasn't it a state official says that it's okay to say these things, 
Just don't oh. put this in your letter so that we yeah. don't have to report it. Yeah, it was actually one of the people from, I think it was the Secretary of State. And uh, <laughs> and it was there in the investigation department who was uh, investigating who the people were that were uh, you know, sending these death threats. Because, of course, you know, it's the Internet. It's, it's air quotes anonymous. So yeah. it's trying to track those people, track down the people who are making these threats. And the person who is like, okay, it's okay to voice your anger at the situation. It's okay to even say it's your fault that the country is in the shitter. It's okay to say this. It's just not okay to say, I'm going to come to your house and shank you and your family. Well, what was really funny is it was very <laughs> obvious the official was like, here's how to write your letter so that we don't have to investigate it for when, when the politicians show up because we're yeah, sick of doing this. That was basically what they were saying, yeah. Because it was obvious they didn't give a shit either. They were like, yeah, well, you can tell them this, and you can tell them this. Just don't put these words in it so we don't have to investigate you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Every, the whole world is just fucking up in arms. You know, and... We, and, of course, you know, here comes Grifty Z with his hand out. Again? I yep. stopped paying attention to the news. I've been, Steve put me on a permanent information diet because I had been getting so angry and depressed at the news. He's like, nope, be ignorant. So I'm being ignorant now. Well, I'm well, tired honey, of drinking. Honey, you just be mad at the X-Men, okay? Don't think about this shit. <laughs> That's exactly why he's like, stay, well, it's basically state yeah. of the trivial shit, and I don't mind. <laughs> if you want to know how bad it is. Grifty Z has pulled two hundred and twenty dollars out of your wallet. That's two hundred and twenty dollars I could have used to get the Battle Angel Alita omnibus. All of if, it. <laughs> if you pay taxes, I did it. I did it by dividing how much money they've given so far by how many people in America pay taxes, and it came out to uh, like two hundred and fifty bucks. Actually, that's kind of weird you came up with that because that's about the difference between this year's tax return and last year's tax return. Isn't that interesting? Okay. I just figured, you know, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that that is very interesting. <laughs> I'm so fucking tired of giving money to other countries to fight their wars. Oh Especially, my God. you know, we've been like, hey, you know, you might want to build up your army. No, nah, we're fine. No, yeah, it'll be fine. Help you well, up. Well, they've they've seen the examples from um, South Korea. You know, hey, build up your army. No, we're good. Uh, same thing happened in Vietnam. Hey, yeah. we, build up your army. Here's all the training, and here's the supplies we're leaving. No, we're good. You need to stay. I'm but, just, I'm you know, fucking tired of it. While we're on this, why don't we actually uh, address something? There's a big thing going around with Tim Pool and other people saying, "Oh, oh. we're going to be drafted." Okay. Uh, after Vietnam, or after the after the clusterfuck known as Vietnam, we will go by its we'll go by its real name. Uh -huh. uh, they passed a law that said before they can before they can draft you, the National Guard has to be completely deployed. The whole thing has to be deployed. Not just you know, not just uh, a few, but all of them have to have been deployed. So in other words, you have to deploy everybody before they can draft, before they can institute the draft. If you're worried about being drafted, what you watch for is you watch for them to repeal that. Now, the minute they go to repeal that, everybody's going to flip the fuck out. But uh, and the other thing, when looking at a draft, you have to remember the other thing. The U.S. military recently did a study and found out that less than 15 percent of Gen Z and millennials even qualify for military service. They're too fat. They're on too many medications. They have a criminal bill or they're too stupid. Here's how bad it gets. I was watching a TikTok video and a YouTube video of these recruiters talking about. There's like a dozen recruiters talking about the people coming in trying to pass the ASVAB. OK, my uneducated GED ass. In the 80s, before they dumbed the test down during the global war on terror, got a 98.9. .9. You can't really get higher than 98.9 .9 because there's questions that, you know, they lie. But uh, I got it. This recruiter was talking about he has had guys come in that scored single digits. This is how fucking dumb people are nowadays. 
Well, I yeah, mean, it, you were the one, I remember you were the one we talked about it a couple of months ago that Gen Z is functional ret functionally retarded. Their IQ is at the mentally retarded level or below. And yeah, that Gen, wasn't Gen making Z fun of them. That's a real thing. Gen Z, well, Gen Z is functionally retarded. You know, uh, uh, I've just got to say it, just uh, play dev devil's advocate here. And I'm not saying I'm correct, but I actually tried to fact check that, Janelle. Mm -hmm. And um, I could not find anything definitive the other way. There were tons of articles of Gen Z is the smartest generation ever uh, to Gen Z is a bunch of retards. So I, I don't, where did that information come from? I'm just curious. I read it off of a Forbes article. Okay. I read it off of a Forbes Forbes Science and Society article talking about Gen Z's fucking retards. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. But then as soon as you get into that, though, as soon as you get to, into IQs, as soon as you mention IQ, you have tons of people crawling out of the woodwork screaming you can't use IQ. Yeah, it's not oh. it's not a definition of actual of actual people's intelligence. My favorite is when they start screaming that you can't use IQ because you have to look at their EQ first. What the fuck EQ is that? emotional something? I don't know, like your emotional empathy or whatever. Yeah, your emotional intelligence. That's more important than uh, your intelligence. Intelligence. That's your far. feelings are more important than actual intellect. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. But there was a great example. I don't know if you guys saw the video, but they had six people and they were like, okay, who yeah, do you think has the that. highest or lowest IQ? And I the one that. feminist with the, you know, the mental illness care cut kept going on and on about how she obviously had the highest IQ. And it turned out she had the lowest IQ and the guy, they kept ripping on the Marine who only had a high school <laughs> education that not only was he basically a baby killer, but he was obviously an idiot because he joined the military and everybody who joins the military is a moron. And he was, uh, he was the third highest. Yeah, it was, yeah, was um, the Asian chick and the Asian dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the the others were so the one Asian guy who was the fashion designer knew that he wasn't as smart as everyone else, and he kept putting him. Hold on for a moment. Going to bed. Yeah, Mom, I love you. I love you too. I go and hear your rant about feminism. No. Yes, I'm ranting about feminism, honey. You tell him Sorry that I've, that. I've I've, I've, I've uh, sniffed all the armpits of his shirts. <laughs> He's already left the room. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the, the one fashion later. designer knew that he wasn't as smart as everybody else and always, he stayed humble and stayed in the low position. And it was even like, I'm a fashion designer. I'm not going to design, you know, uh, military hardware. But this one chick was going on and on and on about, she worked for a company that designed Pfizer. COVID testing kits or something. Pfizer. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember seeing her face and she was shaking her head no. And then she was like, well, you know, IQ doesn't count. You have to look at EQ first before you look at IQ. It's like, oh, the copium you're drinking, sweetie, is wonderful. <laughs> copium. I like that. Jeez. So That was pretty fucking good. I mean, I don't know, you know. I think, you know, so if you're worried about draft because some fucking YouTuber is screeching we're all going to get drafted. Um, it, with with the global war on terror going on in the, during the surge years, the numbers were so goddamn low they were accepting people with drug felonies, okay? And they couldn't institute the draft then. Because, see, the cool thing about the draft is you get to pick and choose some of the best. You know, and... Well, they couldn't institute it back then. They can't institute it now. So until they get everybody, until they get all the National Guard deployed and all that good stuff. So, yeah, it's not happening. Well, the Biden administration honestly believes that they're going to be able to get all those illegal crossing the border to fight the war. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. you get that's not how that's going to work. With everything that's going on in Ukraine, and then the clusterfuck that w that is Israel, <laughs> after the shit that Israel pro uh, did, you know, first uh, bombing the uh, 
the volunteer workers and then bombing the fucking Iranian embassy in Syria. And then bombing the church. Yeah. And, and then do it. Yeah, the the same. Sh I actually, when I did see that, because that was all over the you place saw that this they weekend. Rocketed, they've been rocketing Palestinian Christians. Oh yeah. Oh, why am I not surprised? But I mean, I tr actually this weekend, like I said, that was all over every place. I couldn't avoid that. And I looked at Steve. I'm like, are we seriously looking at? A World War Three here. I was glad that Iran said, "Okay, we, you know, we did our retaliation. We're done." Because I thought for a split second, man, we were about okay, to I, see the start of World War Three. I can no. throw a few things in, but I'll let Rolf talk first. No, no, no. Well, go, you go first. You go first. Well, wait. Okay. I was just, I'm just going to yeah. say, I the same thing with Ukraine. Why are we fucking sending money to Israel or Palestine? Why? Because it, that's the here Israelis thousands of give it back back to the Democrats' campaign fund. I mean, that's millennia old blood feud. Let them fight it out. Like, there's, I, I want to, I, I would really like to be an isolationist country right now. I really yeah. would. But um, here's the deal I looked into it because uh, Ali was asked me to do a, a show, just my opinion. And there's a lot of things at play that you know, I'm not a, I don't have the degree in geopolitics or history in the region. But what I could dig up was a few things. One, apparently, before the attack from Iran, they had told Turkey and Turkey told the United States. And supposedly in Reuters, the United States said, well, okay, your response to Israel has to be within a certain measure. So we already knew. This whole thing yeah. shocking. No, apparently our government already knew it was going to happen. No, why am I not surprised? No, they've been saying it on Twitter too that they're going to do a proportionate response to the to the illegitimate bombing of their embassy. Yeah, see, everybody's like, "Oh, they were having terrorists work out of their embassy." Here's the problem: the minute you decide that a country can claim that there is terrorism going on from that embassy, and that thus it is a legitimate military target, is the minute. All of them have been opened up. Yeah. You can turn to any of them and say, you are now a legitimate military target. Because all it takes is for just the country to go, oh, you're, what do you know? You're being used for terrorism. And that is a, that is an escalation that should never have happened. And the other thing that I said earlier today was that I honestly don't think uh, the United States and possibly Russia as well have the stomach to fight for those two nations. I mean, I don't really think either us or the Russians give care that much to go to World War III for those two nations. Uh, Russia's taken over a million casualties so far. Not that they give a fuck. I mean, I can't remember how many wounded it was, but it's... It's oh, I meant Iran and Israel. Not I know, uh, I know, Iran. I know. But that is what. But you know, Russia has still taken all those casualties. Yeah, and the majority of their combat troops are deployed to Donbas and those regions. So they don't really want to uh, start fucking around in another one. Right, and we don't really have the manpower to do it anyway. Well, no. We're all everybody's burnt out. We've been at war since two thousand and one. And you know what? This shit has been brewing since the 1950s. If they want to play their little faggy game, let them. <laughs> There's a, one other thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, now, this was from the research I did. Uh, if Tweldy's in the chat, please tell me again the sect that uh, Netanyahu is uh, allied with and where he's getting a lot of his backing and uh, influence. But um, anyway... Here's the deal. You know, remember that uh, that bizarre uh, sect in uh, New York where they had the tunnels? Yeah. Yeah. And there was the stained mattress and the high chair and all the other weird shit. Apparently, their rabbi was this huge figure with in the uh, Zionist movement, and his uh, sect has a very large influence globally. And his sect also, and a lot of Israelis apparently believe he's going to be the Messiah. He died in the 90s. And he had a prophecy that it would be Netanyahu 
who would pave the way to prepare Israel for the second coming of their Messiah. Or not second coming, the coming of their Messiah. The Messiah would finally come, it would be him. And it was his endorsement uh, that had helped Netanyahu get into power. And the first time and second time around, he didn't fulfill the prophecy. I don't know the exact reasoning, but apparently uh, somebody else was in power. And then three months later, Netanyahu took over again. And he did it with the backing of this group. And he made all these promises to the ultra-Orthodox that, okay, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're not supposed to hit the Christians, but I'll look the other way. And he had all these other problems. Oh, yeah, well, I'll claim all the territories. And when this conflict broke out, very conveniently, uh, there was this huge movement to kick him out of office. Israel, Israelis in general were getting really sick of him because he was uh, shutting down the various branches of checks and balances in Israel. And conveniently, a war started, and now everyone's behind him and cheering him on as this great hero. But the thing is, is in his speeches, he'll say one thing in English, but apparently in the translations, he keeps saying that he's the hand of God and that he's uh, fulfilling the prophecies. And uh, that he continually is comparing, um, oh God, uh, comparing the uh, Palestinians to the Maccabees, which I guess the Israelis uh, wiped out, genocided in the uh, Old Testament. He Maccabees, keeps saying that this nah. is, a, he said it's a continuation of that, that fight with them, that the Palestinians are just an extension of that same group that they genocided. And he keeps bringing up prophecy that he's fulfilling. So I don't think he's stable. Once people start talking about prophecies, it's pretty much all over. Jesus. Yeah, wow. the guy is a real, I think he's a religious nut, honestly. But um, you yeah, take it for what it is. I, I, I'm not an expert. That's what I dug up. And then, of course, as I said, uh, it does appear that uh, um, the uh, ultra-Orthodox and the extremist factions in Israel do have free reign to uh, beat Christians up now. Just the number of videos coming out. Of course yeah. they do. No, they, they hate Christians. They absolutely despise Christians. And the fact that they've been um, shelling and uh, mis uh, launching, hitting uh, Palestinian Christian churches in their bombing runs. So really we just should get the fuck out of there and just let 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 them fight as you all say wait let but. me get this straight so hamas and the palestinian muslims i know they have attacked some of the palestinian christian churches but they've never bombed them but the israeli government is yes I don't know, maybe the palestinian uh, maybe hamas or hezbollah were bombing them too i don't know but, I couldn't say. Also, uh, apparently, that's not being reported much, but the ultra orthodoxes are burning Christian churches in Israel. No, I've seen them spit and slap around the Christians that are going to Jerusalem. Yep. They're I saw them friends. slap around Chinese Christians from China who are already persecuted for being Christian <laughs> in China. They come to Israel to go to Jerusalem, and they have ultra-Orthodox spitting on them and slapping them around. Oh, I saw the video where they beat that Chinese woman up, and she had no idea what the hell was going on. Yeah, and I'm okay. This is I, this is going to sound so stereotypical. Try that with a Southern Baptist who comes to visit Jerusalem. The Southern Baptists would probably go to jail in Israel because they would fight back. And I say that, you know, a, somebody from the South, Baptist, American, really, if you get, could you imagine a group of people from the South who are Christian coming to Israel to, you know, go to Jerusalem and a bunch of ultra-Orthodox Jews roll up on them and start beating them up? How do you think that's going to go? I think we all know. Good question. Yeah. I mean, maybe they wouldn't do anything. I, I'm just saying, like, I kind of feel like they also pick and choose who they beat up. Well, of course. Well, I'm that little Chinese woman was an easy target for that crowd of young men. Well, I know that this happens here in America too, that the ultra Orthodox will spit at people who come into the neighborhoods in like New York and stuff. Uh, they're st they still hold a grudge against the Roman empire and, and start shit with Italians. 
Wow. Okay, so Okay, well, wait, but they got the Roman Empire and Pontius Pilate to crucify Jesus. Like what the fuck, man? You can't have it both ways. Yes, they can. Don't you understand? They can. Ugh. Oh, it just kills me. You act like they can't have it both ways. They can. Because they want it both ways. Yeah. So you have no choice but to give it to them both ways. They're reminding me of the ultra orthodox Christians from the 80s and the 90s. You know, the Jerry Falwell followers. Oh, God. Those would go out and blow up the anyone. abortion clinics. You can say what you want about those people, but they shot targets. They didn't try to genocide whole peoples. Oh, no, I'm not talking about the genocide. I'm just saying the the insanity. Yeah. But yeah, my whole thing is I'm just tired of fighting other people's wars. I'm tired of my yeah. money going to fighting other people's wars. Fix your own shit. No, we, they don't want to. They want us to do it. Yeah. You know what? Tough shit. Honestly, we should just pull out of every fucking country within reason. I, I Japan... Did you guys ever think that Japan would be a more stalwart ally at this point over the UK? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you don't have to pull out of Japan because at least they, they're they like, no, no, we don't expect it, but we're cool with you guys. But yeah, let's pull out of the Middle East. Let's pull out of Europe. Fucking, you know, deal with your own shit. You guys have existed longer than us. Why should we be cleaning up your blood feuds? Seriously, Why? Look, you guys have been trying to kill each other because a god told you to for thousands of years. Yeah. There's a reason we freaking left Britain. Our country detached itself from Britain. Why the fuck are we getting involved in European affairs? Seriously. It was different during World War I and World War II. World War I was because the president of the time frame was a complete asshole and was totally down with war profiteering. Um the second one was a psychotic man was trying to genocide Jews and take well, over all of Europe. Not and then the ja wait, I was going to say, World and the World. Japanese were going crazy. Let's not forget in World War I, we stayed out of it until the Listina was sunk. When the Listina was sunk, we felt we had no choice but to join. And mm -hmm. then after the war, we discover the Brits sunk the Listina. Yep. yep. To get us involved. Specifically to get us involved, to give us a reason. Oh man, if you want to go off on, okay, I know this. I know this is a total pivot, but for years we have been taught that Britain and France were the good guys in World War Two or World War One. The more I have learned about that war, the more I am disgusted with the behavior of Britain, and not so much France. Britain. There was no oh. good guys in World War One. No. Oh just no. Remember, World War One was the biggest family feud ever. It was a bunch of siblings squabbling at each other. Well, I felt you feel I actually felt sorry for Germany because Austria declared war and then was like, hey, because of our treaty, you have to be our military. So go fight for us. Yeah. And in my opinion, I think Look, Germany got shafted the worst, which triggered World War Two. I got a but comment I, on World War Two, but yeah, finish. Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, but Kaiser did you ever Wilhelm see had major Kaiser Wilhelm because he was a cripple. He personally felt like he had to um, compensate and he was kind of being a dick. Oh, don't get me wrong. Germany was horrible, too. But I just and I'm like, they got, hey, you know, we're this tiny country that has decided to start a war with everyone and you have to fight for us. But what I was going to say is, have you guys ever, um, I'm sure you've heard of Gallipoli. I actually watched the movie. Yes. But one of the scenes that stood out to me was in Australia, the Australia, the British High Command for the military in Australia, as their boys are being massacred in the trenches, are having high tea on yeah. boats in the harbor. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. they said that was totally normal. I'm like, what the fuck? You, you've they almost killed an entire generation. I, I'm not joking. Like the Western world lost mm -hmm. almost all of a generation. And yeah, I just, that was mind boggling to me <coughs> that they were still 
<clears throat> it, it wasn't the middle times when you just had swords and shields. These were guns and shit. And, and nobody knew what they do, so they just marched them into the fucking guns and mass. Yep. Yes! They, it was like, okay, well, either you go in and run into the Gatlin guns, or I just blow your brains out right here in the trench. But remember, poor, poor Janie didn't get to go to college or vote. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I feel so, bad for her. <laughs> Long story short, I am tired of fighting Europe's wars. And well, I'm tired of fighting the Middle East's wars, too. Since uh, this uh, also goes back to, again, Israel wanting to fight, have us fight their war for them. And I, I feel very strongly about this one. Okay, you know, I, we've, I've gone off plenty about how, you know what, Europe can fight its own wars. We're done with this shit. But, you know, at the same time, I'm really getting sick of the Holocaust continually being brought up lately. Ugh. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something about the Holocaust. All my life, I've heard about the goddamn Holocaust. And never fucking once have I heard the same people say, hey, and thank you, America, for sacrificing your boys for freeing us. No, do you know what you hear? What? You could have stopped it years ago. You yeah. could have stopped it years before it. That's why we hate you. I have oh. never heard a single one of those fuckers in my entire life on earth say, and you know, thank you for sacrificing all those young Christian boys to save us and free us. No, no, you didn't do it fast enough. Wow. That's literally what they say is you didn't do it fast enough. Your government knew about it before and they didn't do anything. Remember, that's George Soros' whole excuse, is the West didn't do anything fast enough. Sounds like a whole lot of not my problem. Yeah, I was yeah, going to yeah. say, that's a pretty flimsy mm -hmm. fucking excuse. Because that's even a... if the government did know, didn't it take them years to find the actual concentration camps? No, no. They Well, they found them during the invasion. Well, yeah. No, you know, the thing is, that's a pretty bold thing for a uh, Jewish Nazi to say, George, George Soros. <laughs> I mean, he was a collaborator. Yeah. He did turn other Jews in and then raid their and homes. And he stated it was the best time of his life. Yes. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yep. That guy can't die soon enough. I don't think he's going to die. I think that he has made a deal with the devil. Uh, have soul you seen for... him lately? I, he's, I think he's, he's going to reincarnate uh, beginning, into a reptoid. He, he's beginning to kind of get that weird dementia slur. Good. Gotcha. And he keeps trying to have his son take his place, and his son is a fucking moron. It's actually kind of beautiful how dumb yeah. his son is. It's beautiful how all of these, you know, number, all of these, you know, George Soros types who are going to take over the world, and they're, all their children are fucking idiots. <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> What was it? There was somebody who was like, oh, I do that, you know, I do this to make sure that my children and grandchildren can uh, can run the world in the way they see fit. And it turns out that his grandchild is a gay, furry, erotica writer. <laughs> There's your legacy, buddy. Wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is it just, beautiful. It's, it's poetry. <laughs> yeah, I will burn the world to make sure that my grandchildren. Oh no, he's a he's a gay furry porn writer and is not going to have kids. But you know, hey, what do we know? We we're just sister fucking morons from dipshit yeah. flyover country. Well, actually, I want to ask since we're on this topic. So, was it two or three weeks ago? All of a sudden, the FBI was showing up at people's homes, asking them why they were making memes about the Israel. Hamas war. They were oh, that showing means... up asking. They were doing more than asking. Yeah, yeah, but it was the same guys. And uh I heard some rumblings. People were saying they weren't sure if that was actually FBI. They were just saying they were FBI. Nope, it was it was FBI contractors. Yeah, it was. Okay. Really? Yes, it was. Jeez. Over yeah, been, fucking memes. I've been paying attention to that shit. It, that's a really bad these, opinion you've been posting uh, online. Yep. Well, I was really happy to see a lot of the people are like, come back with the warrant and slamming the doors in their faces. Good. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're going to try and take me to prison for memes. So you're going to violate my First Amendment rights. There's no way you can say that that is a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A national threat, me making a meme. It's no, also, there's no way in hell. It's also if you're critical of the Biden administration. Yeah. Yeah. What I thought was hysterical was I heard about them doing it in fucking Montana. It's like, you guys are, yo, you're lucky you didn't get gunned down. And buried. <laughs> no, I, I don't know where he went. Yeah, I don't know nobody where he went. Nobody putting that description came to my door. Nope. <laughs> nobody likes you, Squidward. Get out. Exactly. <laughs> Just can't believe we've come to the point where they're sending out people to try and get them in trouble because they made a meme. That a fucking meme. It all yeah. started when uh, that guy did that did that meme of CNN uh, Trump being uh, body slamming CNN when they mm -hmm. when they took the WWE Roth footage and they put Trump's head on it and CNN's label on it and, and they were they so fucking, butt hurt. They fucking doxed the guy and tried to get him thrown into jail. Mm -hmm. Well, do you remember the guy that posted the meme of Nancy Pelosi's slurred speech? Like, because he slowed it down and they went after him too and he lost his job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, these know, people have the thinnest skin in the world. Yeah, they literally cannot take what they dish out. Mm -mm. They'll tell you, oh, you need to be able to laugh at yourself, but they cannot. Oh, we we you ha we have the right to make the poke fun at the right. It's like, well, you know, it was funny, but now it's just gotten kind of sad, dude. Because <laughs> that's all you do. That's your that's your whole shtick. I mean, look at how many comedians vanished when Trump left office. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all those all those rate all those shows lost almost all their ratings after Trump left office. Mm -hmm. But hey, you know, no mean tweets, right? Oh, Look hey, how Trump... sad Jimmy Kimmel became. Oh, he's a sad, pathetic figure. It really is. I mean, Adam Carolla stopped speaking to him. Good. And Jeez, I think Adam I... Carolla is conservative. I don't know who any of these people are, which makes me better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel was better back in the day when they did the man show. I mean, one of my favorite parts of that show was the girls with the huge tits jumping on trampolines and they did it in slow motion. So you saw slow motion jiggle physics. Girls it was hysterical. On yep. Actually, I, I will admit I'd watch that and I would be sad because I would think like maybe two thirds of those girls didn't have anything worthwhile. But, you know, then again, I'm kind of biased. Snob. So, yes, I'm a total snob and I can fucking admit it. I, I used to watch The Man Show and Beat Ben Stein. Those were two fun shows on comedies. It was that they were, they were doing the Fox uh, channel block. But instead of it being uh, The Simpsons Married with Children and In Living Color, it was um, The Man Show, Beat, ben, or Beat Ben Stein, The Man Show, and then South Park. Do you know who Ben Stein, wh where he got his start? <laughs> Wasn't he a speechwriter for President Nixon? I thought he was Nixon. He was Nixon's speechwriter. Yeah. Huh. And what's funny is if you ever see the film, uh, what was it, Washington Werewolf? Mm hmm. You ever heard of this film? Werewolf of Washington. No. No. This it's is worth Werewolf seeing. It's, a, it, it's very self aware, it's a camp film. Uh, and it's about a young speechwriter working for Nixon. <laughs> He's obviously supposed to be Ben Stein. <laughs> this was how he made in the 70s. And uh, on a diplomatic uh, trip, he gets uh, cursed by a, by a gypsy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well, that sounds fun. Cursed, if you're going to get cursed, you might as well go classic. And, and it was uh, Dean Stockton who played him. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Okay, I need to see this. It is. Yeah. It's worth seeing. No, it sounds like fun. And he's a real dipshit too. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> but yeah, you know, just I think I I have a feeling at least sixty percent of America's just done with this shit. Maybe more. Well, I do think they are panicking because I've noticed the Trump rhetoric. You know, Trump is an evil Nazi rhetoric is starting to ramp up again. 
Nobody cares. Yeah, no one cares oh, now. Did you see the new thing they did? They did it so he has to be in court for that New York court case every single day, but yet he has to go up before the Supreme Court next week. Yeah. Yeah, that the attorney and general of New York is really uh, that he woman. doesn't get and he doesn't and he has to skip his son's graduations. Mm. I'm just gonna say this. I'm not saying anything, I'm not saying it's gonna lead anywhere, but on the checklist of Weimar Germany type actions, this is one of them. Yes. And it was something similar that actually got Hitler into power. Huh. Most people don't know that. And uh, Weimar Germany was also uh, being ran by a, a senile uh, old man who had no idea what was going on and being puppeted by the people under him. So, yeah, big shocker, huh? Uh, well, did you uh, see the latest claims they've been putting out? Oh, oh Biden, Biden is the father of the Western world. He's often been called the... the the father of the Western world and all the other leaders call for him to advise on what, what kind of diapers to wear? <laughs> what, oh best, what, what kind of pudding he eats? Uh, of course he's, it, I've been hearing that he's the grandfather because he's fucking senile. Oh, it's just like, great. Great. You know, I, I'm not too enamored with Trump because, you know, I would like it if we had people who were, you know, um, I don't know less than a thousand less than a hundred years old <laughs> i'd like to see some you know i'd like to see some gen x you know yeah, i'd like to see some gen x that isn't fucking crenshaw the dick sucker yeah oh god, my I god can't stand him i'd like rand paul yeah no yeah, rand, yes rand, uh, no rand, like paul, rand paul yes I'd, I'd be I, happy with him but you know, as, just... as far as trump's concerned here's the thing my taxes went down my independent and my, my contractor wages, I got to keep more of it. And it was the first year of my life, or the first four years of my life where we didn't go to a war. Yeah. Yeah. That and he put yeah. money towards certain things I thought we always should have. Yes. But. Like space. And also was pulling us out of, uh, he was getting ready to shut down the bases in Europe and pull us out of NATO. And Making he pulled us out pay. of G7. Don't I love forget, that made pay. Don't forget yeah. that they lied to him about the troops that were in Syria. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that wasn't it Mark Milley that bragged about it too after yep. Trump was out of office. Fucker yep. should have been put away for treason. Oh, of course he's not going to be put away for treason. He's a hero. Mm -hmm. My hero. All the gen all the all the modern generals are such fucking cock stroking assholes. I remember I knew I knew something was up with Mattis when he went on this big long tirade about how america has to keep giving these countries money because it stops them from going to war and i was like well if they need the money they don't have the money to go to war yeah um, but no 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 that's i i don't know i was suspicious of him from the get-go is he the one that took a picture of himself in like a gimp suit with a no. dog mask on? No, no, that was a colonel from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that was a colonel from Hawaii in charge of an aviation regiment or brigade. I can't remember which one. Yeah, yeah, that was that was great, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, when you ugh. way to make us look good. Thanks. Uh, no wonder nobody's threatened by us right now. All the people in charge are just fucking idiots. Oh, I am going to say this. I'm going to stick up for the enlisted and, you know, and the professionals that are in there. You know, nobody, nobody mm -hmm. gave, you know, nobody gave Gen X credit, you know. No. They, you know, they were like, oh, you know, you guys would never survive if it was the norm. If you see the norm one more time, I'll punch you in your fucking mouth. But, uh, you know. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that these guys can't fucking. These guys can't fucking win a war because, you know, the officers could do one thing, but the way the American military is made is if the officers have their head too far up their ass, the senior o just the senior NCO just ignores them. Well, like, uh, did you see the whole uh, hullabaloo over the uh, Navy's new uh, um, campaign to get recruits? Are they are they just offering lube at the recruiting station now? <laughs> My 
you know what? If they did, they'd probably get a better reception. No, um, I legitimately feel bad about the poor guy who who they used in the uh, image because um, it's not his fault. They just there's this image of a guy standing on the uh, deck of an aircraft carrier and he's shooting a. a uh, oh aircraft. God. <laughs> And oh. apparently, they apparently they're just like, here, soldier, you know, pose with this. And he's like, okay. And it's, so nope. it's not his fault. Do you know why I don't feel bad for him? Okay, why not? I think, you know like more the, than... I think he was the ship's captain. Oh, was he the ship's captain? <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. I thought he was just a seaman. No, oh, no. Oh, fuck. Okay. No, he was, like the, he was like the ship's captain or an admiral or some shit. Well, and the fact the scope, was on, the scope was on backwards. The scope was on backwards. <laughs> the broom handle was so far forward, it was, you know, it, it's unusable. What, baby? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, God, there was, uh, he's, as people were saying, his arm, his elbows were out so far, he was trying to fly home. <laughs> um, you know, just to stand is awful. And you had somebody, you, you had the hand of somebody on his shoulder, obviously trying to tell him what to do, because not only was that scope backwards, the lens caps were on. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if I thought that it was just some poor semen that they just shoved a rifle in his hand and said, here, pose with this. So, okay. That's pretty funny. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. getting back to the uh, Gen Z being the dumbest gen generation ever, there is one other caveat I'm going to throw to that and why I'm not totally convinced on that note. Is they said the same thing about us. Yes. And I, I you know... It's not like we can trust the media. <laughs> no, no, we can't. No, we cannot. You know, and everybody's got, you know, you have one article, Gen Z's destroying industry. The other article, Gen Z's protecting the industry. Yeah. No one cares, Squidward. <laughs> I can't afford groceries. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. No one cares, Squidward. <laughs> no, nobody does anymore. And we're being and we're getting really tired of being told we have to. That is true. Yes. Because why should I give a fuck? Okay. It's it's not for me. You know, it's time for me to it's time for me to just realize that I'm the past. Okay, I'm the past. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> like fine, then leave me the fuck alone and stop taking my money. Yeah. Oh wait, you're you're right here when you want my money. Well, wait. I didn't think there was enough Gen Xers to go around to destroy industry. There is. It was it yeah. was back in the fucking nineties, and then it was like, oh, Gen Z is disrupting the industries, and this is why it's a good thing. Uh, nobody yeah. cares. It's just those articles where they all furiously masturbate about how great everybody is that they support or that or that they don't like. It's just the same old shit. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed that news articles about how Gen X was evil and it was our fault the world was falling apart. That stopped real quick. Because we were all okay, the whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were all like, and? Are um, we supposed to care? <laughs> I was going to actually bring this up for another show because I need to get the articles. But there have been a spat of articles recently from the usual suspects now uh, with millennials saying you know maybe gen z or uh, gen x is the ones we can turn to because they've been through stuff no oh, too late fuck off yeah no, no we're not going to help you pull yourself up by your bootstraps like we had to hey, no, uh, no, so no 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 maybe even... you'd stopped wiping your, our, your ass with our our culture <laughs> no here's one how about when you're done uh talking all that mad shit to me that you were talking see i'll help people who you know honestly want help you know people who you know need help i'm not a big enough dick where i would look at somebody and say oh you're gen z i'm not gonna help you you know i'm not that big of a dick but as far as in general uh no go fuck yourself it sounds like a you problem and well, you made it very plain that i wasn't allowed to be part of this so bye i don't think it'd be fair to mash gen z with the millennials they both have their very unique cultures and attitudes and problems well, I can't understand what the fuck Gen Z's saying anyway when they mumble that weird fucking shit. 
Okay, that's true. Uh, that is actually true. And, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing. <laughs> I thought the beatniks were bad, but holy fuck. Mm -hmm. I oh, really wait, Ross, you don't want to be a Riz Lord? The fuck is that? That sounds like a fucking venereal <gasps> disease. <laughs> Okay, since I have a teenager at home, we are introduced to new slang because my son comes home. And he's like, oh, God, you have to hear what this you know, new slang is. Um, so to say somebody has charisma, if they have riz. Now, not charisma, riz. And if you like have hardcore charisma and you're awesome, if you're a super chat, you're a riz lord or you're a rizard. <laughs> You I will know. repeat. See, I actually think it's kind of good that we don't know what the fuck they're saying. That sure, they've got their own culture. They're doing their own thing. Yes. It, it, does <laughs> make, it makes a certain amount of sense. And, you know, it's like, okay, I can totally see this being actual, like, language, you know. Well, here's another one. Instead of saying something is cool or awesome or rad, they say it's bussin'. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? It's bussin'. <laughs> it's bussin', bussin'. motherfucker. <laughs> Okay. What the shit did I hear from these kids? I'm like, oh my god, I thought our slang was weird. Like, sure, Boston. <laughs> I mean, I actually understood um, uh, sus, the term. Sus. Yeah. I totally yeah. understood that. Bussin. How do I, how do I put it? <laughs> I don't so even care anymore. <laughs> Yeah, if you've ever seen that, that if you've ever seen that, uh, sniper joins uh, GI Joe, uh, robot chicken. I feel like fucking fumbles. I don't even care anymore. Uh, don't care. Gen Z, here's some advice to you. All you have to do is not shit on our culture and vandalize the shit out of it, and we'll probably be okay with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's um. You guys have heard of Drippy, right? If no. something is cool or you have abundance of something or your, you know, your clothes and your outfit look awesome, you have a drip or you're drippy. I try okay. not to be drippy. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. But most people don't want to be drippy. <laughs> I slept with this one loose girl and my, my thing got drippy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's not do that. <laughs> also turn world colors. <laughs> Yeah, I guess flexing is when you show off yeah. stuff that you have. Yeah, but I mean, that's been around forever, you know, nice flex. Yeah, flexing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, uh, this one is definitely, is it finna? Your, fi your definition is fixing or planning on doing something. Instead of saying, I'm going to, I'm finna. What the fuck? <laughs> really? That's just too fucking lazy. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just too fucking lazy. <laughs> but apparently, um, the slang term for sick has actually come back in style. Oh, really? Yeah. Frontin'. <laughs> um, that's so wizard, Annie. <laughs> oh dear God. You're no. a <laughs> you're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> you're a hairy wizard. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we know if we want to piss off our kid, we call him a Riz Lord. He gets so bad. At because <laughs> he hates today's slang. Because he's just like, why? It's a brand. He says it reminds him of New Speak from 1984. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna go back to the culture thing though. I, I would like to say. It would be nice because, you know, again, Gen Z is too early in the game to really know. But it would be nice to see a generation create their own culture that we don't understand. Seriously, I, I would much prefer that than this uh, this recycling. Let's just take something from somebody else and shit on it. Or, or, or like the fucking people in our generation did where they decided they were fucking hippies. Oh, God. those They were losers. God, we fucking laughed at those shit. people, stoners. It wasn't I know a lot of people who are like that. It was just, ugh. What was worse were the fake Rastas. Oh, ooh, God. Ooh. <laughs> oh, God. Fake Rastas and fucking 
the hippie, the, the fucking hippies. They dressed like hippies. They tried to talk like hippies. I fucking hated them. They're like my, you know, they're like my natural enemy. And they were oh, all. Always... I, I, I get you. <laughs> and it was like, you just don't understand. If you fucking talk to me, I will fucking throw you out that window. I swear to God. And you know, being an at, be, going to going to going to Southern Oregon University in Ashland was just absolutely fucking amazing because they were everywhere. I hated them so much. I felt like Willie from The Simpsons, you know. <laughs> British and Scottish are natural enemies. <laughs> Damn Scottish, they ruin everything. <laughs> you know, um, remember in high school, there was one dude like they just there was that circle of kids who, yeah. If we could have gone to Woodstock, man, that would have been so awesome, man. Why don't you say you went to Woodstock? Because that's what everybody else says. 500,000 people went to Woodstock. You have met them all if you're Gen X. Sorry. No, just no, 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 you're right. Yeah, totally right. Four days of peace and love showing it's possible. Yeah, if you give kids free music and lots of drugs. And, and bring the army in to provide food and fucking medical care. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, bring up that, do they? No. Okay, were you also kind of like kind of smiling to yourself when uh, Jerry died? Who Jerry Garcia when they were all the boomers were crying over it? I didn't even give a fuck. I didn't even know. I, I wait, is he from like the Grateful Dead or something? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, my oh, yeah, parents... you were raised by fucking hippies, you didn't have to put up with this. shit. My parents mocked the Grateful Dead, so they Good were when we found out. They're like, uh, one more hippie down. <laughs> I thought Jerry Garcia like made ice cream. No, <laughs> no, his his the uh, sycophants at Ben and Jerry's made the cherry Garcia. That's what and I'm I tried it. Of. It's not that good. No. Nah. Well, you know, when are they going to when when's, when when is Ben and Jerry's going to give that land back to the natives? <laughs> Never. They, got, they they sold it. Somebody else makes Ben and Jerry's ice cream now. But I love the fact that they were like, oh, we need to give land back to the natives. And a Native American tribe jumped up and said, you know, you're on our land, right? And they shut the fuck up. <laughs> they have not so, said shit about that since. So when Jerry Garcia died, uh, Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead died, you know, being that I was from the suburbs and, you know, most of the people, you know, had hippie parents or you know, flower children parent, right? We were all calling each other. Are your parents in the living room crying too? <laughs> Hippies, hippies, hippies made it as hippies right until they started earning thirty k a year and could fuck in the back of BMWs while wearing while wearing Nikes made by slaves. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, who, I'll tell you who drives this fucking slave this slave shit is the boomers. They love uh, nothing more than owning it, shit yeah. owned by slaves. Mm -hmm. You know, when when it came out in the fucking late eighties, early nineties that Nike shoes and fucking Adidas apparel and all this other shit was made in shops. And Apple was made by sweatshops and slavery. They didn't give two fucks. They couldn't care less. You know, when our generation said, hey, you know, you're exporting our jobs to where they have literal slave labor. The boomers like, LOL, stock money would go up. You deserve to, you know, you deserve that Nigerian nurse who steals your medication. <laughs> no, man. It, yeah, their their fucking ideals lasted right up until the time they got their first paycheck. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you know, for a group that's the group that talks about how they, they personally, by protesting, they personally, as an individual, stopped the Vietnam War. They did not meet a war that they didn't like. Yeah. As soon as they got in political power, and were too old to draft. They did not meet a war they didn't like. They sent. If they sent us to war. I mean, if somebody farted, they sent us to war. But when they were eligible for the draft, you know, but you can thank them for because they passed that, that they have to, you know, deploy the National Guard, all the National Guard before they can uh, enact the draft. So don't worry about being drafted. Um, another one for you. Um, did I tell you about my parents when uh, Obama got elected? Did they cry? I bet yes. they cried. Yeah. Oh, they cried, need... and my dad held the woman who raised me. He said, "We did it, honey. We did it." Oh God! Uh, this is going to be part of our legacy. Yeah, right there, right there. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> you know, there was a black guy wandering around the country asking for fucking change, and you gave it to him. 
And what did he change? Nothing. He didn't close Guantanamo Bay. He didn't end the war on terror. You know, he didn't end the Patriot Act. He didn't fucking bring jobs back. You know, hope and change. Keep a fucking single promise. Yeah, you keep a single fucking thing. You keep a single fucking promise. Everybody laps it fucking up. They're like, oh, there was no there was no scandals during his term. Only <laughs> oh my god. I yeah, remember they that. that. They still claim that. that. Yeah. Yeah, they said that. I remember that was all over the news. Oh my uh. Fast and the Furious, Benghazi, you know, all that shit. Yo, it, you know what his excuse was? Oh, but I wasn't the one that did it. So I have no scandals under my belt. I didn't yeah. do nothing. Yeah. Didn't it's do like, nothing. yeah, he wandered around the country asking for change and then he didn't do a fucking didn't do a bit of work he promised to do. I was fucking pissed. You know, because I, I I voted for him. I thought, you know what? You know, I didn't realize at the time he was part of the Chicago politics machine. Yeah. Because they hid that really well. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. He was only a senator for like, what, a year before he ran for president yeah. and won? He had no experience and that, in that's uh, he, politics. Not, that's why I voted for him. What I didn't know is he'd been groomed since college as part of the Chicago machine. But I will thank him for one thing. I will always be grateful that he kept Hillary's ass out of the White House. Because <laughs> it was her turn. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons they cracked. Because I remember my parents, when Trump got elected, we, we, we still have to get a woman in office. Yeah. They, they, that was part of their legacy. They were, yeah. they were going to be the ones to do it. Yep. We'll get a woman in office. How about we get the best person? Okay. Because you want to... You know, as far as vice presidents go, in my lifetime, even fucking Al Gore, even fucking what's his name under fucking Bush. Oh, was uh, that the old Quail? Quail. Quail. Yeah. Even Quail did more than Kamala's doing. You saw Quail in public more than you saw Kamala. And I'll bet a hundred fucking dollars you couldn't pick Quail out of a fucking lineup. And if half of them were black, you couldn't pick quail out of a lineup. If there was eight black people, four Mexicans, two Chinese dudes, and three white guys, you couldn't pick quail. And one of them's a midget, you couldn't pick quail out. You'd have a 50-50 chance and fuck it up. <laughs> Nobody knows well, who that motherfucker was. Kamala's hiding. I am convinced that's what she's doing. She just wants to keep her head low. Because, you know, they promised her the fucking big chair. And then Dr. Bill... Dr. Jill Biden took over. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. I was watching this thing because I watched stuff that I really shouldn't because I want to. <laughs> they, they had this They had this thing where they were, there was some, where Michelle Obama was interviewing some trans kids. And it was your typical stuff. But then it happened. This trans kid goes, so, you know, as a fellow transgender, you know what it's like? <gasps> oh, and she God. just sat there. And that was the end of the clip. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She literally can't say anything. She can't. Her brain locked up. That's great. It was fucking glorious. It was like, that's what you get. That's what you get for pumping these, for pumping these fucking gullible fucking kids' heads full of shit. That whole, as one of us. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They just literally called her transgender. And they can't what? say anything. It was they fucking glorious. They can't say it. They can't uh, delete it. They can't memory hole it. They can't nope. do anything. No, they memory hold the fuck out of it, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Wow>. fucking great. <coughs> yeah, I mean, Kamala was, you know, Kamala was fucking promised the big chair. Mm -hmm. And I, I love she wants it now. No, no, I think she's gotten close enough to see that uh, being in the big chair means everybody runs it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she takes the blame. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh I still love the fact that uh there was that fucking three AM or, or some military thing happened and went down. I can't it was like, like two years ago. And at three o'clock in the morning, you know, it was literally three o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. They're trying to get a hold of the Pentagon. They're trying to get a hold of the Secretary of State. They're trying to get hold of the Secretary of Defense and they're trying to get a hold of the president. And nobody was answering the phone. They literally couldn't get through. Wow. 
it was one of those fucking things that got swept under the bus again. That's okay. The Pentagon released a report saying the bombing, the bombing at the gate during the withdrawal from Afghanistan was unavoidable. Really? Really? It was unavoidable, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. E4 Mafia says differently. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's, it's going to be fucking crazy, and it's just going to get fucking hilarious. Because holy shit, have, have the fucking attack ads started, and they are fucking tone deaf. The attack ads have started coming yeah. out, and they are fucking tone deaf. It's stuff like, uh, oh, Biden raised $50 million, and he spent it on the following. Trump raised... Trump Trump raised five, ten million dollars and spent it on legal fees and golf trips and question mark. It's like, you know, we don't buy that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the legal fees are only there because you're persecuting him like a black guy who shopped at Walgreens in 1952. <laughs> yeah, you know, nobody fucking buy, nobody fucking buys this shit, you know. And what the fuck is this stormy? What do you pay attention to politics, Ishi? Yeah, I do. What the fuck is this stormy Daniels part two shit? Didn't that hooker oh God, go away? She's back. Yeah, yeah. They're grasping at straws. They've got nothing. I mean, I thought I thought she got I thought I thought she had to pay Trump off and like go live in a hole somewhere. Is, uh, is it is it is it because he, it supposedly she had he had to pay her hush money so they're technically they're uh, taking to court the victim of extortion? Uh, something like that, yeah. <sighs> Why don't they just come out and say it? You're being arraigned on the charges of being orange. <laughs> At least I could respect that. You know, we're we're uh we're arresting you on the charges of being Trump. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just found it interesting that he paid her off the money ran out so she ran to the media <laughs> and her porn career got revived of, um, and then she got memory hold again and now it sounds like they're dragging her back out well remember two weeks after the Kavanaugh hearing you could buy a used Ford pretty cheap <laughs> <laughs> that's okay I had a horrible fucking nightmare the other night yeah. I dreamed I woke up and the Democrats had decided who they were running and the Republicans had decided they were running. And I just stared at the computer screen because on one side of my screen, it said Hillary for president with Donald Trump as their VP. And on the other side, it said Donald Trump for president with Hillary as his VP. Oh. I actually woke up literally saying we're fucked. <laughs> it's like the only way shit could get worse. No, actually, that's not true. Biden's in charge. Remember, like Obama said, never underestimate Joe's ability to fuck shit up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, have you guys bought stuff that used to be like, you know, top shelf brand and noticed that the quality has really gotten shitty? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shrinkflation I mean, for food. It was. It's It's not even. It's, yeah, it's like I got some Del Monte the other day. You know, Del Monte is the fucking top shelf fucking vegetables mm -hmm. for your canned vegetables. I found four fucking stems. And the can really? was only like two thirds two thirds full. Bullshit. I Damn. fucking I took pictures and fucking sent them nasty messages on fucking Twitter. <laughs> but it's like, and you know, I was looking, and a lot of people, I know people that like buy like buy high end furniture and stuff. And one of them was like, he's fucking pissed. He paid twelve hundred dollars for a fucking kitchen table, and his his uh he was letting his toddler jump up and down on it because you know twelve hundred dollars for a fucking table. And his toddler cracked the top, and he could see inside was fucking corrugated honeycomb cardboard. Oh, bullshit. What? And it said solid wood. And when he went back to the fucking furniture, they were like, cardboard's wood. Oh, my no. God. No, it is not. It's all, it, it's, everything is turning cheap. Everything, no matter how expensive it is. It's fucking weird. Learn how to restore things from uh, Goodwill guys. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that's that's useless now. Why? Goodwill, Goodwill's onto it. I went into Goodwill the other day, and uh, they wanted a hundred and thirty-five dollars for one of those fucking fiberboard desks, what? computer desks, and like they wanted two hundred dollars for a fucking headboard because Fuck. they know that people come in and buy it to fucking renovate it and resell it. So they've been so. 
St. Vincent, well, no, St. Vincent de Paul isn't too bad, but their furniture section is terrible. But Goodwill, Salvation Army, they're all jacked, all the fucking secondhand stores are jacking up their prices. So it's damn near cheaper to go to Walmart. That's yeah, because most of our furniture, we, we restored. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a kitchen table. Well, I give it to my daughter because she's got the big house. But uh, the kitchen table's from 1920. It fucking looks like it. <laughs> it's got like where cigarettes were set down and burnt into the table. <laughs> you know, and my son in law is like, oh, I could, you know, I could sand that down and revarnish it. And my daughter was like, I will kill you in your sleep. <laughs> that table is ours. And he's like, okay, okay, calm down. <laughs> it's one of the few things I got. <laughs> so on Wednesday Janelle's going to rant about X-Men and how much she loves them and how she'll never never let X-Men 97 go no yeah, the I thing won't is, is... I have an unhealthy obsession with X-Men sadly <laughs> not anymore <laughs> uh, well for me I mean, I'm going to say why I have it X-Men was my safety net growing up just saying all the shit that I went through, I could run to my comics and read them and forget everything and instead be in that world. And you know, so speaking for at least, I would say maybe a third of us. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I still get absolutely butthurt and enraged and I shouldn't, I should know better. It just fucking kills me every time. Well, now oh. that I'm reading Grant Morrison's book, uh, Morrison's book, and he talks about what a great job and what a genius move it was to make uh, Magneto a drug addict, um, I'm sure I'll have plenty to rant about, too. I forgot about that. Why is he Magneto honestly, a drug addict? Because he felt oh, no. that he needed to modernize the character and give him a new angle to make him interesting. He literally became addicted to the mutant version of PCP and became a PCP. Like, he was roid raged out. And then he turned around and got all the new young students at the school to become fascists like him. And then he killed Jean Grey by giving yeah. her a planetary level stroke with his magnetic powers. And uh, that, that, that's what this uh, Brit thought was innovative. So yeah. let's see. He, he uh, addicted him to drugs like the Bane chemical for DC where all the bad guys got hopped up on it to fight Batman. And then he did that fucking T that fucking made for TV movie where at the end of it, you know, the guy where there's, they're all can't wait to meet their leader and they roll the thing back and it's a picture of Hitler. And then he killed somebody off. Um, that should have been able to wipe his fucking brain before he came up with the idea. Yeah. Huh. Uh, another thing that uh, I'm I'm looking forward to sharing on the air, or maybe I'll even uh, have Cat do a dramatic reading in the idiot voice for us. <laughs> uh, he talks about how his ideas came from when he started doing DMT and how God talked to him. Uh, I hate these people with the yes. fiery passion of a thousand sons. Between he said that. Uh, when he was dealing with, I forget, what was it a heart attack or cancer or what? He said that a pagan version of Jesus visited him in the hospital and told him what to do. There to is no better. pagan version of Jesus. There's no pagan Jesus. Well, the, the, this is a pretentious Brit who, who is basically a discount brand uh, Alan Moore. Oh, God. Hitler either bombed that place too much or not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Brits. I got British fans. I got friends that live in Britain. Get out. Yeah, but they're can. pretentious writers need a beating. Yeah, yeah. Well, so do ours. I mean, ours need, you know, fat Gandalf needs a beating. Yeah. yeah. Alan Moore, Neil he, Gaiman. He needs a beating. He needs to. It's really More funny Alice. that whenever I would go to Comic Con, I'd talk to the guys from 2000 AD. They were like the exact opposite of the authors you're listing off right now. Clancy oh, yeah, the fans been. are fine. Oh, Clancy uh, should have been beaten with a shovel. Well, one of the guys that I met that worked from 2000 AD loved coming to America every year because they said we had the best food. Because he's like, you know British food is bland and bad. 
didn't have a bad thing to say about our country. And we was even talking about how awesome American superheroes were. Wow. I, I knew a guy from Britain and he was like, Hey, I'm going to come visit you. I'm going to land in New York and drive out to Oregon. I was like, You're gonna do what now? <laughs> he was like, yeah, I'll be there in like six hours. I'm like, okay, dude. He you calls that. me like, he calls me like 10 hours later. He goes, I got off the interstate. I'm like, goodbye. And I'm like, <laughs> He called up. He's like, what do I do? I'm like, dude, how long have you been off the interstate? He goes, like two hours. This was before GPS on the phones was really a thing. He had a oh, flip God. phone. He's like, I have no idea where I am. I'm at us. I'm at a pay phone. I'm like, you're in a town with a pay phone and it's 2008? Dude, <laughs> you're, you're going to eat by cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> and then he calls me like two days later. He goes, I got to be almost there. I'm like, where you at? He goes, uh, I just crossed the Mississippi. I'm like, dude, you're oh. halfway here. Maybe. He's like, how big is this fucking place? Jesus. <laughs> he took a wrong turn. He took a wrong turn. Did in he Montana just think we were? Oh, no. And ended up in Texas. <laughs> and then somehow he ended up back in fucking, where was he? Illinois. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, it took him two and a half weeks to drive across America. I, I don't think people from other countries realize how big our country actually is. Yeah. No, they don't. No, it's like people have no idea how big Australia is. Yeah. Australia is fucking huge. Yeah. You know, nobody really has any idea. It's the Mercator map that does it. Yeah. Well, that and also it's... um. People, where they grow up, they get a sense of localization of what distances are. Yeah. And you'll get people from the East Coast who will say, oh, well, San Francisco and uh, San Diego are in the same state. That must be, what, two, three hours drive? <laughs> no, try nine to ten. Well, like they say, 200 years is a long time in America. 200 miles is a long distance in England. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's like, I, you know, somebody was like, they were like, oh, I live uh, 80 miles outside of London. I'm like, so you basically live in London. And they're like, no. I was like, dude, 80 miles here will get me to the fucking Walmart. And it's not even a round trip. Yeah, the other thing that's uh, pretty, uh, well, I, I don't know, maybe this has changed, but uh, in the aughts when uh, Kat and I were doing all the convention scene quite a bit, uh, anytime we go to the East Coast and we'd start talking about distances, or we'd talk to an East Coaster, and we'd always talk, well, oh, that's 45 minutes away, or that's two hours away. Huh? Yeah, they, <laughs> they this... judge distance in distance, and we judge distance in time. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 an hour, it's an hour to it's an hour to Walmart and an hour back on country roads. So there you go. It's uh, by the crow flies, it's over 50 miles, you know. <laughs> Yeah, because there's two different there's two distances in America. Well, there's three different distances in America. As the crow flies, mm -hmm. by road, and how long. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to know how long. Yeah, my this my friend was telling me, dude, I got on this highway and I drove and I fell asleep and I woke up and my car was stalled out in the desert. <laughs> I'm like, you're lucky you're fucking alive. <laughs> he fell asleep in New Mexico. I'm like, oh what were you doing God. in New Mexico? That was a little far south. I told you what route to take. Well, I got off the interstate. Stop getting off the interstate, dumbass. Oh, God. You know what? When my dad moved to Virginia from Los Angeles, he learned that lesson of don't get off the interstate. The interstate nah. had uh, traffic because of a uh, uh, an accident. And he figured, oh, well, you know, there's a, there's just a little side street. I'll pop over there and I'll just follow it and it'll be fine. No. Um, he wound up farther back down yeah. the interstate than where he started. I'm a I lived in, to explain this to me. I lived in the – I lived in – Oregon and I wouldn't get off the interstate. <laughs> um, my dad said that in uh, Virginia, all of the roads uh, follow where a cow walked like 250 years ago. And so basically the road went twisty turny all this other directions. And then he wound up actually like back down the, uh, the way that he had come by about 10 miles. <laughs> And the problem is, is with the way the roads were, you can't turn around. 
there there is no place to you know flip a bitch and uh, go back the way you came. So he had to follow it till it took him back to the interstate. Ah, uh, so, so yeah. did he like go through like towns that were like uh, I've gone back in time or no towns? It was all uh, just farmland. Yeah. Yeah, get off the interstate in like Nebraska or Oklahoma or Kansas and you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is why GPS is great. Although the problem was, is at least in Virginia, um, oh, I don't God. know if you have this uh, problem where you are, uh, Ralts. Um, the roads change names like yes. every quarter mile. Oh no, we don't have that problem. It, it changes when you're not looking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've been on the same highway for the last, you know, hour and a half, and then suddenly it went from Highway Four to uh, Country Road One Eighty Two. <laughs> wait, what happened to Highway Four? Like, wait a minute. I just, just remember when we were in Redding, Pennsylvania, and. We were oh there when God. they decided, the city decided they were changing all the roads. Mm. All at once. Of course, then well, Redding, Pennsylvania also had that newspaper that literally the, the top story for the week while we were there was <laughs> tree fell and road. And then it was the debate of who was going to remove the tree and how long it would take. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> tree's been in the road for four, for four days. Who's going to move it? <laughs> like, Jesus. I think we actually like you know a week later we were uh talking with our friends who lived there and we we're like so did they ever move that tree <laughs> all right uh, i'm starting to lose steam yeah, guys. Like, it just hit yeah. me 10 minutes ago i'm trying <laughs> but i'm dying no, I'm, all right everyone well i hope okay. you enjoyed this show uh the books that i've written and the books that ralts have written are linked in the description if totally you hate everything and them. want to read something good, I recommend you check them out. Uh, you want something that is going to make you feel good about humanity? Read Ralph's books. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. You'll like it. Yep. And book 14 is, I just took, I just, uh, no, book 13, I just paged through. Looks really good. You even got the Marco, it even got the Marco parts right. For those of awesome. you who know what, know what that is and why that was difficult. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Night. Good night.